It's been a week since my laparoscopic hysterectomy, complete hysterectomy. How am I doing? Slow. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. I'm Gary. And we're going to take you on our first outing. It's been one week since my surgery. I had laparoscopic hysterectomy. And then two words I can't pronounce or spell. Um, I'll explain that in a minute. And um, this will be a big deal. Um, don't know how I'm going to do. We're going to be going to a very big grocery store, but it's the closest one to us. And we're familiar with HEB. So We'll take you there, and then we'll come back, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the surgery. This has been where I've been sleeping, because I can't get into our bed yet, and I'll have to explain that later. But this gets wrapped around my stomach, around my stitches area, and then I lay down very slowly onto my very comfy. It's very comfortable. It really is. And then I've been doing some reading, and... There's Gary. <laughs> and then I was going to show you the steps that I've been doing. I started out the first day, uh, the day after the surgery, was from this step to the end of the kitchen here is eight steps. <laughs> and I did it back and forth and back and forth uh, several times. Then I started going outside. Ever since we rebuilt the step and redid the flooring in here, that step has always been just fine for me to go up. But when I come down, from here to here has always been just a wee bit too much. And with my incisions, we thought it'd be better to ease that up a little bit. So this stool is being a multi-purpose thing right now. We'll show you how it works for the truck. So this is how I do it. I cushion this around me like this. This is a pillow from the hospital. They gave me, sent it home with me my souvenir. And I sit down, and then I, it cushions me, it gives me elevation here so I can lay on my side because I'm a side sleeper. So I lay like this, and like this, and I'm good. At night I take the extra pillows off down there, have more room, but this works pretty good. And then getting up, I push with this hand to get push myself up without putting strain on anything here. And then this is our patio and I was able to go 20 steps here from this end to that end and then back and forth. This, this stool is so cool. Gary, Gary discovered it at Walmart. So it could be used as a short step inside and now it helps me to get into the truck easier. It's not like the big trucks, but it's, it's a little easier getting in now than before. Alrighty, we're in. And then walking. We got a lot of rain last night. Otherwise, I was walking from this uh, speed bump to the one behind us, which isn't very far, um, about there. And so that's all the farther I had to walk. And I, don't, I didn't count the steps for that. And I've just gradually been working my way up. Uh, yesterday we walked, I'll get my finger in there, we walked down to that about the, almost to the end and walked around and did a loop. I walked to the showers last night. Um, there's a lot of side, little side rows here that go 
little side roads that go back and forth so we go up and down some of those i think all total yesterday we figured i did a mile maybe a little more sure something like that well it's a quarter mile one loop around yeah. and we and we did that twice in the day not not at one time <laughs> just the whole day and then yeah it's about maybe a mile all total broken up <laughs> and it wasn't a 20 minute mile either <laughs> for putting on my seat belt I have a pillow going across here and that helps to cushion the incisions too this is my first outing. Actually, it's Gary's too. We've just been staying at the RV park all week. I had my surgery a week ago today. And so far things have been going pretty well. I'm just gonna give a quick update on this, give you a few tips on some things and uh, what's been working for me. One of the things that's been helping is walking. And I told you about that already. And um, then the other is electrolytes. I found out that that can help with healing, speed up healing. I also found out pineapple can help with that. So I'm gonna be getting some of that at the store today. Um, I'm moving slow, much slower than normal. It isn't that anything really hurts, um, except for the anesthesia when that was wearing off. Oh my gosh, that was painful. Right in the back here between my shoulder blades was the worst. And they said that's because the anesthesia travels up in the body um, as it's going out of it. And it can take anywhere, usually most of it is gone within 24 hours. And the, uh, otherwise it um, takes about it can take up to a week for all of it to go out and it's been a week today so I think I'm pretty much done with the anesthesia <sighs> Chinese chicken soup, rice, something. Okay. And uh, potato salad. And potato salad. Oh. Yeah. And then all the condiments you need for the recipes are usually right in here. biggest H-E-B we have ever been in, but it was the closest grocery store to the RV park where we are. And we are familiar with H-E-B because we shop there a lot when we're in Texas. <clears throat> so we knew we could what we could find there. We'll see if I regret it tonight or tomorrow. We made it back. Oh my gosh, we must have been in the store for an hour, at least. It's a big store. <laughs> big store and a whole different layout than what we're used to at HEB. 
we made it. And I'm probably going to be very tired shortly, so I'm going to try to get this done before I fall asleep. Um, the day, I'm going to tell you about the day of the surgery, and I also want to tell you uh, about something that was added. In our last video, I just had a little blurb in there that said that there was an unplanned CT scan. So I'm going to tell you what that's about. About a week before my surgery, before we even left Corpus Christi, I had gotten a report from MD Anderson saying that they had done a second opinion on the pelvic MRI that was done in Corpus Christi in March. This is May. And um, in the report, it said something different than what the original radiologist read, and it was a concerning thing. It said that there was suspicious for peri peritoneal disease. Peritoneal. Yeah. Peritoneal disease. So I looked that up, and it is cancer of the abdomen. I thought, oh, okay, this is a new development. So I, I uh, sent a message to my doctor at MD Anderson asking if this was going to change anything for my surgery because I thought, you know, if there's cancer in the abdomen or suspected cancer of the abdomen um, and they're going to be cutting into the abdomen to get to the uterus and everything, I thought that could be a problem. So she wrote back and she said, on our way to, Cor to Houston from Corpus Christi on that Tuesday, uh, she wrote back and she said, she didn't think it was going to change anything, but she was going to order a CT scan so we could get more information. The CT scan was done on Wednesday, and we got the report back just before we met with the doctor on Thursday. And um, the the oncologist is the one. The oncologist is the one who talked to us first. He came in the room first and talked to us. Showed us where the uh, the mass was. It had not changed in size since. You're gonna take that over. Okay. We found the. the we found my tripod, but uh, <laughs> I forgot to use it. Okay, so we're just switching hands again. Anyway, um, so the oncologist was telling us how how big it was. We had originally thought it was about the size of a walnut. He said, "Yeah, it's about the size of a small apple." Because I told him, give me a food thing. Don't don't give me the centimeters. Because all the doctors and all the different people that read that all saw the mass as a different size. So I'm going to trust the oncologist. He said it's about the size of a small apple. The uterus isn't very big. This mass was taking up a large part of the uterus. And it was going down in to the towards the bottom of the uterus. And that's why there was that part that they couldn't really um, see in the original pelvic MRI. So they did the CT scan and they did it from the chest down to the um, rectum. They did a, a much larger area for the CT scan. We got the results back on, on that Thursday when the oncologist came into the room first and he told us where it was and all of that and that it had not changed in size. Um, and that it looked like everything was still in the uterus, everything was contained, nothing outside the uterus. The peritoneal cancer was kind of off the table. Oh my God, that would have really been interesting. Um, by the way, that can, uh, a lot of the same things for uterine cancer uh, the same risk factors can be for that as well, but it can also affect men, just so you know. Uh, white women over 60, I think it is, or 55 or something like that, and black men can get peritoneal cancer. So thank God that was not the case. That, um, and then the doctor came in and talked to us, <clears throat> and we got everything ready. Then we got some instructions on things I had to do um, I had to do a high, it was called a carb load, carb, carb, I think so. high carb load or something like that. I had to drink 24 ounces of grape juice before I went to bed. And then I had to have 12 ounces that morning of the surgery. We had to be to the hospital by 8 a.m. I had to take a shower 
Thursday night and Friday morning and drink my grape juice and um, got to the um, <clears throat> got to the hospital at 8 o'clock. They got me into the room right away. They started um, hooking up all kinds of things and it seemed like it was just a revolving door of people coming in and out and in and out, different things. Uh, the um, They hooked up, they did an IV in my hand um, right about about here. It's still a little bit discolored. It got a little black and blue. And then on the other hand, they did it here. And that turned a little black and blue for a couple of days. And <clears throat> the, radi or the um, anesthesiologist came into the room and he was talking to us. And his daughter does YouTube. So we were talking YouTube and we were talking uh, uh, traveling. He just thought it was amazing that we live in an RV and we travel. He was uh, just a really delightful, very pleasant man and explained everything they were going to do and all of that. Um, and then I looked down at my hand and I saw this tube and this little bubble coming towards my <laughs> hand. And I was like, what is that bubble? And he said, oh, it's okay. Don't worry. It's all right. It's, it's, that's normal. It's okay. I'm going, okay. So, huh. Uh, that, and then, um, they told Gary, and then he left. He said, the room is just about ready. I'm going to go check on things and I'll, and we'll be come, taking you in shortly. And, um, then they, the nurse said she was going to take Gary to the waiting room, mm -hmm. show him where the locker was, if he wanted to put some of our belongings in there. <clears throat> and, uh, he said, I love you twice as he left the room. He I gave at, her a big kiss, but she doesn't remember that. I part. do, do. I oh. remember that too. <laughs> yes. And then uh, it was between the two I love yous. Uh, and then uh, I looked at the clock and it was about 25 to 10, somewhere around there. And the nurse said, we're going to be taking you in shortly. And then I was out. And I don't remember anything after that until I was back in recovery around noontime, around noonish, I looked at the, I remember vaguely that they were taking something off my face. I think it was a, a, a oxygen is my guess. Um, and then they were replacing it with little things that go in my nose and they had little tubes around here. And uh, so the, the, they had intubated me, but I never felt that, never had anything, no sore throat, nothing. They were very good at that. Um, They'd had that in and out while I was out. So I was grateful for that. That was the one thing I was freaking out about. And then they brought Gary to the room. It was around 1230. Yeah. And we talked a little bit. Oh, before Gary got to the room, though, I my bladder woke up. And the nurse had to take me for my first walk. And I had to go to the restroom, like, now. And uh, I was really surprised because they said that was one of the things that may take a while to wake up. But... That did. Fortunately, it woke up very soon. So that was one thing done. And then Gary got to the room and we were waiting to get the discharge papers. Yes, discharge. I was home before four o'clock the same day as my surgery. I've never heard of that. Hmm. I have four incisions in my abdomen, um, very small. The first, the, the, um, I would say the biggest one or the longest one is maybe three quarter of an inch at the most. There's no stitches. They use some kind of glue. They may have done stitches inside, but on the outside there's no stitches. There was no pain from those at all. The pain, like I like I said before, is was from the anesthesia. And there was a lot of pressure on my bottom from a lot of that too, I think that it was just it was just all bottled up in me, and that lasted for about four days. Today was the first day, actually. Today's Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, was the um, the first day that I have not had that heavy feeling in my abdomen that I've had all week. So, and I didn't have any pain up here anymore either. So I think we're finally got the anesthesia out. 
Mm. Um, That's good. <clears throat> yeah. I got some comfy dresses to wear um, for after. I only got two of them, but I have I have a couple other dresses that just slip over the head. Nothing around the waist, nothing uh, that is uh, that I have to pull up or anything like that. So that's been really comfy and very, very easy to get in and take on and off real easy. I'm going to let Gary talk here in a minute again, promise. Uh, but I was going <laughs> to, I was just going to let you know that as far as the pain goes, they told me they had four prescriptions. One was for oxycodone. One was for uh, a stool softener, which I got a lot of tips from a lot of people that said, don't skip that. Make sure you take it. I said, okay. Um, the third one was Tylenol and the other one was ibuprofen. And I said, well, we've got ibuprofen and Tylenol at home. <laughs> I didn't know this was extra strength that they were trying to have me take, but I didn't need it anyway. So I took one oxycodone when I got home from the hospital and then I slept and slept. Uh, that, that was, the nurse told me that was my job. The first day was just to rest and sleep. Then the next day was when I was supposed to do the walking and getting up and moving. They never told me how much I was supposed to walk. So I didn't know. And so I was just walking and pacing and several times a day well what they meant was get up and move eight times a day so I maybe did more than I needed to but it's okay um, <clears throat> so then by the second day I was just taking regular Tylenol I took one ibuprofen I think and then I took a couple Tylenol for a couple days but it was mostly for the anesthesia pain it wasn't for anything with the incisions so that's been really good. Um, I was cooking, I think, by the second day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, made some easy suppers, but they were things that I had kind of thought through before I had a time. And I'm only a few steps from the couch to the kitchen, so it's not a big deal. So all in all, I think I'm doing pretty well. Um, I'm going to let Gary tell you his thoughts and how the, everything went the day of the surgery, what he's what he thought. but. I think I'm doing really well. We really appreciate all the prayers. We've had so many people um, texting and messaging us and, and everything, asking how I'm doing. So I thought, okay, I better, better get this up. We were putting updates on the Facebook page, but we weren't doing anything for YouTube yet. So this is your update for YouTube. And now I'll let Gary talk. So she got <laughs> to sleep through Monday, uh, Friday from about 10.30 till 12.30. Oh, before 10, I think. I was okay. out. Nine. So she got to sleep yeah. and I got to worry. So in order to take my mind off of what was going on, they told me I had to go down and have breakfast at the cafeteria. That I didn't helped. know that. Yeah. Oh. They told me I had to. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> so I went down and had a little bit of breakfast and <clears throat> checked emails and texts and things and um, went back up with my cup of coffee and just kind of sat around and waited for a while. and. Then I got up and walked around a while and waited a little more. And next thing you know, it was shortly after noon and the doctor was staying in there. It was actually before noon. And uh, she took uh, some time, to talked to me about everything that had happened and said she was very pleased with it and uh, no big surprises at all. Uh, so now all you have to do is wait for the uh, pathology report, which is coming up in uh, hopefully in less than a week. Yeah. And uh, then we'll find out what all those things are they took out. Uh, praying that it uh, was not any kind of cancer. Uh, if it is, that it was all contained and that uh, there's no requirements uh, other than just healing and walking and exercising and getting on with life. And getting back to Wisconsin. Yeah. We, we're missing our grandson's graduation. We have twin grandsons that were graduating in early June. And we're missing their party. And we're also missing the other kids and even some of their parents. Yeah. Well, I guess all the parents. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're looking forward to getting back to seeing family up there and friends and just uh, getting out of the heat of Texas for a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're really glad we were in an RV park um, very close to the hospital. 
and uh, they had free shuttle service, but we didn't need it. We didn't know when we'd get done with things, and it was over a weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Yes. Besides. Yeah. The, so the yeah. surgery was on Memorial Day weekend, and I'm going to be having my six-week checkup on 4th <laughs> of July weekend. We don't know yet the date for that. We haven't gotten a date on that yet, but that'll be coming up. I, I can't leave until she sees me at the six week checkup. I'm hoping that it's going to be a five and a half week and that'll be good and we can get going a little sooner. But I don't know how I'm going to travel. We were going to uh, travel maybe to Fredericksburg and see friends there for a while. Um, <clears throat> but too many bumps. Well, and going for it, and people in Corpus Christi wanted us to come back, uh, and I was like, uh. Plus, it's four hours one way, and. And that's by car with a with yeah. the RV. It takes about five, and that's just I know that would be way way too much for me right now. So we're looking at maybe just leaving the city for a little bit here, and going someplace just a quieter, um, a little more relaxed place. Although we have, I think, the best site in this RV park. It's been very nice, yes. Yeah, it's very pretty. Um, so that's the that's it. I'm sorry, it's a little, this is, this is supposed to be a short one. I, I was get a little carried away. But the main thing is that <clears throat> things seem to be progressing well. I got a phone call from MD Anderson. Had the surgery on Friday. I think they tried calling me on Sunday and something, it was a ro robotic type Thing and it was a goofy question and I didn't know how to answer it and I there was nothing else coming up so I just hung up <laughs> and I think they called me then on that Monday on that Memorial Day and asked me again and then I was able to talk to someone there and ask about things but um, for the most part incisions are not a problem the anesthesia gases were the worst problem the, the drugs they used oh my gosh I can't believe how many drugs they used for anesthesia. So like when I saw that report, I was like blown away. Um, just, I guess we didn't mention, I had, uh, they removed the uterus, which had the mass in it. They uh, took the cervix, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries. And so they, that is called a total hysterectomy plus these two words I don't know how to pronounce. So that's what I had done. It was not just a simple hysterectomy of taking the uterus so it's a lot more to it but they did it all with just these four incisions just blows me away and the fact that i came home the same day <laughs> it's like really wow and she's doing very well so we're grateful for all your prayers we're grateful for the answer to the prayers mm. we don't know exactly what's going to happen from here on out but we're pretty positive i am going to be in a I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm, I'm, they called me to find out if they could take a little extra blood on the day before surgery and um, to have permission to use whatever tissues are left over <clears throat> after the pathologist is done. They're going to, it's called a low risk, and I don't know what it meant, really. I. I don't have to be involved in it at all. It doesn't cost me anything. I wish there was a discount on my surgery, but there doesn't sound like there would be. Um, but I think what it meant was I was a low risk for getting endometrial carcinoma. So they're going to study that, I think. That's the plan. Uh, but then there's also a possibility that you can get endometrial carcinoma back. And I said, well, how can you get it back when everything's gone? And she said, because it can come back in other organs. So we don't know if I'm going to have to have scans periodically. Um, originally, the doctor had said probably not. But we'll see if anything changes when we get the pathology report back. So your prayers are still appreciated. And uh, please continue those. And... We will try to give you um, updates as often as we can, but both of our arms have gotten really tired holding this silly phone. Well, it's and just a short. Yeah, yeah short video. Yeah. yeah, now I got to edit this and get it up. Okay, I'll probably fall asleep before I do that. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. 
uh, by hitting that red button down below and next to it a little bell is going to pop up ring the bell and you'll be notified every time new videos come up we're also putting some updates and things on our facebook page i might put up some of the things that i've been making for suppers on facebook uh, there was one soup that i just kind of threw together with leftovers and stuff and oh that was good <laughs> i gotta make that again um no recipe i don't follow recipes <laughs> so it was just kind of all right threw together but anyway uh, yeah just please follow along with us and we'll keep you updated and thanks again and until next time god, god bless, bless.